If we think about climate change, most of society is focused on fossil fuel combustion. But what humans release on an annual basis is just one part of the carbon cycle. Carbon dioxide concentrations also go up and down because of the actions of plant photosynthesis taking carbon out of the air and then respiration by all living things releasing carbon back to the air. So as humans continue to release fossil fuels into the atmosphere, it's critical to know what these natural ecosystems are gonna do in a future. Are they gonna play a role like they do today, balancing the carbon cycle? Or in the future, might these systems release more carbon to the atmosphere, which will increase future warming? Alaska, in many ways, is at the forefront of climate change because of the dramatic temperature changes that have been seen here. And it is an indicator of changes that are taking place across the whole high northern latitudes. Boreal forest extends from Siberia and northern Eurasia, and it stretches all across southern Canada, all the way up to Alaska, where it's primarily concentrated in the interior. It's dominated by evergreen conifers, but there is also a significant deciduous component of aspen and birch. My particular interest in boreal forest is how the forests are changing and what the feedbacks are to climate how much the warming and drying in these high northern latitudes has changed the fire regime and how it's changed what grows back after the fire. 57 watts per meter squared. We estimate how much light is absorbed by the trees because that drives photosynthesis. And we also measure the carbon dioxide fluxes through time. 68, got it. We see quite dramatic changes in the amount of area that burns every year. The intensity or severity of burning. Most of the big fire years have been in the past 10 years, with the biggest by far being 2004, 2005, and then 2009. Changes in burn severity mean that we see this greater deciduous component of the forest coming back, outcompeting this conifer forest that was there before. And that feeds back to the climate system in a number of different ways. Deciduous forests grow much faster. They're more productive, so they take up a lot of carbon through productivity whereas conifer forest grows slowly, incrementally through time. Another way the forest feeds back to climate is in how they reflect light. So a dark conifer forest is absorbing a lot of energy and warming the surface, whereas the deciduous forest is much more reflective and actually reflects light back to the atmosphere. So if we see this regime shift to more deciduous species, that suggests that we're not only taking more carbon out of the atmosphere, but the forests are also reflecting more light back. And those would both tend to mitigate the impacts of climate change. But I think much of that mitigation could be dwarfed by the carbon that has been stored here over centuries in permafrost soil. As that thaws, it could release an enormous amount of carbon into the atmosphere. And uh, that's, in the past, that's been referred to as the carbon bomb. We're inside a permafrost tunnel that was drilled in the 1960s. And what we're looking at are plant roots that grew here probably 10,000 years ago. And these roots, they look alive but really they've been frozen since that time, trapped in the permafrost. Permafrost is permanently frozen ground that contains carbon. 
the remains of plants and animals that have accumulated over thousands of years. What's exciting about permafrost is that deep in the soil is sort of like the outer space of ecosystems. We tend to think of an ecosystem where plants are growing at the surface, but with permafrost ground, we're finding that this carbon pool extends down tens of meters, but it's also frozen in place, so it's protected by its current climate. What we're seeing in this core, this dark brown color, is pockets of organic carbon. This is exactly a type of pool that we would call vulnerable to climate change. Right now we have twice as much carbon stored frozen in permafrost soils than there is currently in the atmosphere. In a warmer world, as the ground thaws, that carbon may end up as a big release of carbon to the atmosphere and increase future warming. So the ultimate question that we have is, once permafrost thaws, what's the impact on the ecosystem carbon cycle and how does that feed back to climate change? This site is an experiment that we set up to actually warm up the permafrost ourselves. Each one of these boxes, as it closes, it encompasses a small atmosphere. And we're measuring the movement of carbon dioxide in and out of the ecosystem. The okay, first one is 55. To get a perspective of this exchange of carbon, we need to make these measurements during the day and the night, during all seasons of the year, to come up with this annual movement of carbon between the ecosystems and the atmosphere. Currently, we have computer models that predict the future climate, but these models have nothing in them in regards to permafrost carbon. So we're working to integrate the variables we measure here about permafrost into these models. The changes that we're seeing in Alaska are not like anything we've seen, certainly in our lifetimes. So in some ways it's exciting as a scientist to be able to study it, but at the same time it's a bit worrisome. The pace of climate change is much faster than we ever have seen in the recorded past. So what that means is there's a lot more uncertainty about what the outcome will be. Everyone wants to predict the future, which we know is impossible, but we use our scientific analysis and computer models to get a better understanding of future climate.